so i hope you know the crux and the definition of partnership the concept of partnership is clear let's take a quiz on this topic first prior to enactment of the indian partnership act 1932 the law relating to partnership in india were embodied in a companies act b chapter 11 of the indian contract act c hindu law d chapter 10 of the indian contract act where was it covered it was covered in the chapter 11 of the contract act let's take that's the answer now this you know provisions relating to partnership were covered under chapter 11 in the indian contract act later on this chapter was cancelled we call it repealed so this chapter was repealed and a new act the indian partnership act 1932 was formed next what is a partnership a an agreement between persons b an association of persons c a body of individuals d all of the above it's an agreement between the persons it is an association of persons c it is a body of individuals or all of the above it is an agreement between the persons of taught you the definition the definition says partnership is an agreement between the persons who have you know dot 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 so it is an agreement between the persons next an agreement between the partners must be a valid b lawful c competent to contract d all of these the agreement between the parties it should be valid or it should be lawful or it should be competent to contract or all of these so the answer is all of these now it is important to understand that a contract will not be competent to contract itself so here the competent to contract refers to the parties next the partnership defines business in an a exhaustive manner b inclusive manner c exclusive manner d illustrative manner now what are these manners exhaustive manner means you know the definition gives you a list of what all possibilities there can be and there can be no other possibility you know out of this list beyond this list which is not included in the list such a definition is called as an exhaustive definition you know which gives you all the possibilities and inclusive pos you know definition is a definition which gives you some idea about that concept it does not give you an exhaustive list it just gives you an idea and tells you that there may be some other examples of it as well exclusive manner is you know exclusive definition means there there are definitions which are defined in negation you know for example a public company is defined as a com- public company is a company which is not a private company now the definition does not define what is a public company how you know what are the features of a public company but it tells you that a public company is a company which is not a private company and then it defines what what is a private company so the definition of public company is a exclusive definition it excludes the private company and whatever is left becomes a public company so it is an exclusive definition and finally illustrative definition is where examples are given illustrations are given so this becomes an illustrative definition so out of these the definition of partnership is an inclusive definition because it does not tell you exactly what partnership is it just gives you an idea it tells you that it's an agreement between the persons 
who have agreed to share the profits of the business carried on by all or any of them acting for all so now there can be many examples there can be many businesses which come under the ambit of partnership because of this definition because definition is open any business which satisfies these you know conditions becomes a partnership so it is an inclusive definition next johnson is an employee of abc limited he is entitled to a salary of 8 lakhs and entitled to a commission of 20% if the profit in the year is 1 crore then johnson is a employee b partner c both partner and employee d none of these here johnson is only an employee now you have to you know understand that abc limited is a company there cannot be a partner of a limited company a limited company can only have shareholders so abc cannot be a partner so this option this option and this option sorry b and c option are out of the context they cannot be the right choices so now what remains is a employee d none of these but in the first line itself we are told that johnson is an employee of abc so the matter ends there he is an employee of abc though he gets you know a part in the profits as commission yet he is an employee of abc limited abc limited has employed him he will never become a partner okay so the answer is employee next johnson is employed as a controller finance in a partnership firm abc and company johnson is entitled to a monthly salary of 2 lakhs and 20% of the profits only if profits of the firm exceed 1 crore in a year state whether johnson be called a only a partner in the firm b only an employee in the firm c partner as well as employee d none of the above now this is almost similar to the previous question the only difference here is that there it was abc limited that is a company here it is abc and company that is a firm so now does johnson become a partner here or he remains an employee or he is both or he is none the answer remains the same he is an employee because johnson is employed as a controller of finance he does not own the business he is employed by the firm to look after the finance so he is not the owner he is not the partner okay next mutual agency under the indian partnership act 1932 means a sharing of profits of the firm among the partners b rights of a partner to act as an agent and principal of other partners c mutual cooperation among partners d joint liability of all partners we already told you mutual agency means a partner is agent as well as principal of all the other partners so here the answer should be rights of a partner to act as an agent and principal of other partners okay next m is employed by pqr brothers a partnership firm m is entitled to a remuneration of 40000 per month plus 12% on the profits of the firm if profits exceed 10 lakhs hence m is not deemed 
as a partner in the firm m is deemed as a partner in the firm m's appointment is invalid d m can claim only 40000 per month but not a share of profits this is again you know what we just discussed m here will not be deemed as a partner in the firm and that's the answer okay next which one of the following statements is true in a partnership every partner is not an agent of the other partners b a partnership firm has no legal personality distinct from its partners c in a partnership the profits of the firm should be distributed equally amongst the partners d in a partnership the liability of the partner is limited to the extent of the capital contribution we all know that in a partnership firm there is no separate legal status there is no separate legal identity there is no separate legal entity it is no separate from the partners it is not distinct from the partners so answer here should be d okay next a and b enter into an agreement to work together for a construction project wherein a will receive all the payments including profits and shall pay 300 per day as wages to b state whether a and b are a master and servant b partners c laborers d co-venturers here you can see that a will get all the payments and he will give 300 per day as wages to b that's it so that means there exists a relation of master and servant they cannot be partners because if they would have been partners they would have shared the profits but here you know he is paying him wages that means one of them is a master and the other is a servant so the answer here should be a master and servant next every partner is an agent of the firm as regards a debtors b partners c creditors d employees in relation to whom every partner is an agent of the firm uh, is it in relation to debtors is it in relation to partners is it in relation to creditors or in relation to employees the answer is creditors the outsiders because he has the power to bind the firm by his acts done with outsiders that is the creditors the liabilities that he has taken next a a rented a house from x for carrying on the business of firm after one month a did not pay the rent b and c are other partners of the firm x can claim his rent a a only b all the partners c b and c only d a and c only now you know a has taken a house on rent from x b and c are other partner now what is a doing is a is binding the other partners for his acts so now he is acting for all the three partners so now all the three partners are liable so x can go to any of the partners and ask for rent so he can go to all the partners okay that's the answer